Thank you and welcome. Underlying this conference is the reality that there are certain strategies that the federal government uses on issue after issue in its dealings with the states and the people. You are all familiar, I am sure, with the reasons why the framers embraced federalism. Our founding rests on the idea that rather than flowing from the creator to a king, sovereignty flows from the creator to each individual equally. As noted by James Wilson, a signer of both the Declaration and the Constitution, the supreme, absolute, and uncontrollable authority remains with the people. The people delegate their power in such proportions, to such bodies, on such terms, and under such limitations as they think proper. The supreme power, however, remains in the people, and the people have not and ought not part with it to any government whatsoever. In furtherance of those principles, the framers developed a compound Republican. As Madison described it, the power surrendered by the people is first divided between two distinct governments. And then the portion allotted to each subdivided among distinct and separate departments. This provides a double security to the rights of the people. The different governments will control each other and, it's, and at the same time, each will be controlled by itself. In that regard, in 2011, the Supreme Court held in Bond v. United States, a unanimous decision, I might add, that federalism is designed not just to protect state governments, but also to protect individuals. The court explained, federalism is more than an exercise in setting the boundary between different institutions of government for their own integrity. Rather, federalism secures to citizens the liberties that derive from the diffusion of sovereign power. By denying any one government complete jurisdiction over all the concerns of public life, federalism protects the liberty of the individual from arbitrary power. Federalism thus serves as a bulwark for individual liberty. Elitists, though, have been of the view that the federal government needs vastly more power. And so they have worked to shift power away from the people and to the federal government. And that has been done to the point of dysfunction. Today we are going to dis discuss some of the ways in which power has been shifted to the benefit of special interest and to the detriment of the people. We will hear about what has happened to some of the basic elements of civic society. It includes the politics of money and how that hurts working people and savers. It includes a federal land policy that strangles progress and individual liberty. It includes federal energy policy it includes education policy, which is something that people across the political spectrum believe should not be a matter of federal control. Yet the federal government has pushed national academic standards and tests into classrooms across the country. Standards of poor quality that lock children into an inferior education. It includes two fine-grained issues, such as how the federal executive runs roughshod over the states and the people. In short, the federal executive branch works largely through state agencies and is in those matters unmoored from the people. Congress, for its part, has made the federal executive branch so large and vast that Congress itself can no longer provide authentic oversight. As, you've, as the other two speakers have said today, this is a fitting place to hold this forum. New England is the birthplace of the American experiment. And if that experiment is to be saved, it would be the people who save it. And they will do so, I believe, by demanding that those crossing through on the way to the White House stand and fight to return power to the people. Thank you.